Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is a down and dirty Z50R. This video is all about installing the suspension from the three inch extended swing arm all the way to the modified hydraulic fork. You ready for the good stuff? I know I am. I'm super excited to get this mounted up. This is the T-Bolt TBparts.com 3 inch extended swing arm. It's billet. It's strong. And it is just real nice. It's got a much better tensioning system than stock. Big old ears for the shocks. Comes with new axle. It has a replaceable chain slide. And they did away with the bushings and replaced these with, I believe, instead of a rubber bushing, we're running, there you go, nice metal ones. So, this thing. It's going to last a long time. It's also maintainable. To get your... It's actually got some weight to it. To get your best results with this swing arm on a Z50 frame, you want to use... They're 330 millimeter shocks. These things are super duke. You can buy this as a kit or separate. I actually ordered mine through Amazon, so I got free shipping, but we're in Bambla Jam. We got all that quality. It came with the extended brake rod, which we needed anyway because ours was, I think it was chicken wire or barbed wire that was making it happen. So, definitely an upgrade. It also comes with the eyelets. I believe these are 12 millimeter and it has the 10 installed looks like they're adjustable and I mean just look at these this is the real deal let's take this nut off and we're gonna remove the bolt the washer we should have one of these heavy-duty bushings both sides and these aren't just bushings by the way oh ho, ho. see what I'm saying yeah buddy <laughs> this thing takes it there pull that out slide that back in I think I'm going to hit those with some grease and then I'll put these back in and just line it up. I'll get it on there and then Shish Kebab City. With the bushings out, 
I'm just going to put one side on. I'll then set this bushing. And then I'll do that one. I have everything just kind of hanging out. Barely catching the lip somewhere. I'll take my big flange bolt and I'm going to feed that through. Might need two hands, let me see. Oh, I got it. I have a washer. And my nylock nut. Grab my wrench and I'll tighten that up a bit. She's swinging. Now, we'll install those awesome shocks. I know the adjusters go on the top, but I just wanted to make sure how these return back down to the mounts on the swing arm itself. And it appears that where they have these threaded, you can actually just leave them in like a stud and then just bring it up and put the shock right on there. I'm going to set the other one again and do them both just like that. These aren't tight, but they're not loose either. Up top, if I push these all the way in and we take a parallel measurement we're getting seven and a half down here up top we're at seven you can feel the tension from it being a little out of square so I'm gonna get some little washers and see if I can fill up some of that void This is looking serious. Now that we have the swing arm on, we can start installing our fork. The two bearings are the same. The inside races are the same because those go with these bearings. What is different and important that you note this if you're going to try this suspension system is that the outer races are different. One is a little bit wider. That one's going to go on first. It'll slide on. No problem. Should be snug at the bottom once we get it over that little taper if you try to do that with the other one you'll get a little ways and then you'll get stuck so don't start grinding anything away that you don't have to here's the measure These could have slightly different variations, so just because this is working out for me doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be perfect for someone else. But in my application, all I chose to do was clean up a little bit of the mill scale on that little tapered section there. I really didn't take anything off. 
I already test fitted the bearing race and it pretty much went on there and I could have banged it on real good but where I know that I want to maintain my things I do want to ensure I'll be able to get it off again so right now if I lower it down I mean it is dead nuts tight I'm going to clean it up it's a little black and thinner on a rag and I might hit that with a quick out of the spray can and then get that bearing right on top and I'll get this thing going. I'm not going to sit here and wait for that to dry so it'll be grease on there anyway and like I said I'm going to be maintaining it so keep it moving. You shouldn't have to tap hard at all. There I am, nice and flush. We'll make sure that our bearing fits. The balls are going to be facing down. All right. I'll take these back in exchange for a ring of grease. Take our nice clean bearing. We'll lower it down. And now we're ready to bring our lower clamp up through the neck where We'll grease this trace and we'll set the bearing on and then I'll grease this one because I'm also going to have to get these nuts in the mix. This one well, goes like this and works like a seal over the bearing. I'll have that one ready to go. There's a couple different methods for setting your inside races. One of them involves heat and freezing the actual units themselves. What you would do is Put the flame right to the frame. That heat expands that metal. The freezer tightens this one up. So at that point, you're able to basically, what they say is drop them in. So you kind of put it in the hole and probably push it there, but chances are you're gonna need a little persuasion. So, our frame is painted. I don't wanna put the flame to it. I got a little bit of my red grease on the outside. Obviously, these things go in. The one on the bottom goes this way. The one on the top goes that way. The machine side is the race and that needs to face the bearing. I'm setting them on top and tapping on them with my rubber mallet. I'm not sure where that went, but once they start to set and they're flush with the tube, I'm taking my one and one eighth impact socket. This could vary depending on what you know what you have. You might have to use a piece of wood. But you just want a nice positive placement. Mine is, you know, the surface area of the entire lip to this thing, it looks like. But it's not wider, okay? And that's important because it's going to set down in a little bit. If you were to, 
use something that was wider, it wouldn't go in the hole. So line it up, everything's good to go. And we just give it the old tap, tap, tap a Rooney. This bearing is going to go balls up that way when we bring this into the picture and we start putting torque it doesn't crush the bearing if you put it this way or you put the bearing upside down you would disintegrate that cage everything feels good you don't want any binding I'm just using a big pair of pliers to tighten that nut I can still move this seal around so I'm not crushing anything but it's not going anywhere once the top plate goes on and this nut goes down it'll help lock that in place anyway I think we can actually install this and we'll just put the nut on loose so that we can move it around depending on how we square the forks up each shock tube has the same parts you have your lower you have your dampener this controls the fluid and how it moves around when this is basically a piston the tube is compressed into the lower this has some threads on it you can kind of see them if I can get you in focus there you go all right this goes down inside of here what well, goes down inside of this tube comes out the bottom here and then it connects to a bolt at the bottom here that way this cannot move it has a seal around it so this moves that doesn't move the fluid is sitting there it has to move this manipulates the way it moves and the rate that it moves the ones in the other shock are probably about that much longer these two cups right here are what look like bushings but they're not these are preload spacers these go on top of this spring the spring goes down inside the tube those spacers go on top I'm going to reassemble my lower onto my tube that's just the seal these seals can be replaced if they ever go bad but that's what holds all the goodness down inside might as well get a peek you can see it's very clean very nicely machined so you know try to keep it that way when you're messing with these things when you get that dampener in there and the lower back on the tube that little spring by the way that's on the dampener that is to keep you from bottoming out completely You can barely tell that dampener is in there, but there it is coming out the bottom. Now I'm going to feed that into the lower. 
it's in there because well I'm looking at it it's right down in there so if we tilt it you'll notice that dampener comes out so you don't want to do that you're gonna have to keep it in that position same time we're gonna try to thread that bolt right there into it it's a little tricky I'm just holding it upright and using my wrench to get the bolt see it from the side and this is probably because it's new that seal is kind of holding it in place but if you noticed there's no way to hold the dampener so it can just spin around in there it does have a head to it something like that but it's way down inside of there let's see if we can get this tight without getting down inside of there it's worked a couple times it might work now so get you set up I'm just gonna get right up on in there and I'm twisting very lightly and I'm just holding the rod in my other hand and it seems to be tightening I can see it's threading in so we're getting there You'll feel it when it starts to bottom out. Now, I was able to get this off. Okay, now it feels like it's just spinning, okay? I'm not getting anywhere anymore. But it is threaded in there. If we try to pull this out, we can't because it's attached. So... If I pull back on this, there's some tension there. That's that spring that's on the bottom. So I'm just pulling back and I'm pushing with my thumb. Same time, I'm coming back to my bolt and all of a sudden, I'm grabbing threads again. I'm doing work. It's actually getting tight. It feels tight. Now, for whatever reason, when it gets to a certain point, I can just kind of hold the tube, you know, both of them together in one hand and twist with this one. And I mean, I'm giving it the torque thunder I'm not holding back you can see that thing bending the wrench Ugh, if that was a torque stick I'll tell you something I'm on it so could I loosen it yeah probably but That's pretty dang tight. If you can't get it tight that way, don't worry about it. I have my small ratchet here, quarter inch, big old extension on it. I believe this is a 14 millimeter. I got into sort of a weird situation choosing my nut size for this special tool. All they did was take a bolt that had the head that I needed and I locked two nuts together. 
you use a bolt like this it's easier because you run out of threads we're only tightening we're not loosening you could use this for loosening too you see this big hex head on top of the dampener this flange bolt fits right inside just like that so now if we reach down inside with our 14 millimeter we can hold this thing and then tighten our bolt from the bottom through the tubes I already have it sitting there ready to go and that will be our final result yeah buddy now they can just work both ends just like the factory now that my dampener is tight for realsies we can drop the spring in notice that it has a progressive rate to it the side where the coils are tighter that goes towards the bottom so that'll go in and then you have your preload spacers these are what set the initial jammer you know your pogo stick that's what gives you the push back when you push down the dampener and the fluid controls some of that at the bottom and it definitely controls the rebound and the motion in the ocean but the initial impact that comes down to the tension on that spring that's why they put these in there I'm kind of surprised there's two this cap goes on top of those the more tension you have the more preload on top of that spring the harder it is to get this cap in again having the right wrench helps a lot let's face it I know these fork tubes really well this one is unmodified and I can feel that preload this one is factory I haven't modified it and that is definitely softer so eek these are not the easiest thing to stuff in there just the two that it comes with there's quite a bit of tension when you're trying to put that cap on and thread it you know once you get it there that's one thing but then you gotta twist it and hold it square so that it gets those threads you can't cross thread these all right um we're gonna have to add something we're gonna add fluid we're gonna add a thicker fluid a better fluid and we're gonna need something to add a little more preload so whatever's here is going to be in here too I'll show you how to take this top off and get that apart as soon as I figure out what to use up here this is the fluid that came out of one of these fork tubes I have another cup here we're going to open up the second one here 
and we're gonna see how much is inside remember that smaller black fork tube that I said was from a mini bike that was slightly shorter but has the same axle holes and the same top bolt in 27 millimeter tube well that came with its own triple clamp this is the lower this clamps to either one of these so you could just you know put that on your mini bike and get yourself some sort of an instant lift probably more like three inches but maybe run some disc brakes or something so we're going to use this kind of like a vise it's going to hold this tube we're going to clamp right on i'll be able to push down on it and then just loosen this with my wrench right here on my bench there it is and my clamp h10 that's what it says and i mean i'm gonna get right up on this thing because i know how tight they can be oh see what i'm saying Woo! trying to do that any other way be uncivilized you don't want to take it all the way out content is under pressure remember that spring we got those two bullets right up here so wear goggles be prepared put the clamp aside I have my next wrench it's that 10 millimeter it's a lot easier to handle one of those than one of these on the ratchet at this point I'm going to use that one to continue to back my cap bolt out of here and then when it gets loose enough I'll put the wrench down and I'll use my thumb like this and I'll cup the whole thing with my hand that way once this comes out I can catch that and then I have those other two bullets behind it that are sitting on top of that spring so that's the move Like that so the pressure's off nobody got hurt everything's okay when it gets bad is when you're pushing downward too because that will add even more tension so until those threads are released don't push down either just concentrate on that coming up this has fluid in it when you pull the spring out the fluid is going to drip back down into the tube I'm going to go nice and slow with that and then I'm going to take the tube without the spring which will be placed right here by a nice clean spot on the bench and I will empty its contents into a fresh cup or at least a moderately clean and empty cup we're going to use different fluid anyway but we're looking for the amount and making sure that they're somewhat the same i just checked the old torque spec just in case and i don't know if it was a good thing or not but i actually think they used that first method i showed you instead of this one because i just tightened it 
little bit more. If we look at the fluid, we can see, you know, they're pretty close. A little bit more on the right. I could have lost a little bit on the left on the first spring, but not that much. Doesn't matter. We're just going to say this first line is where our baseline is and we'll work from there. So we'll put those together and find something else to do with it. I don't know if I'm going through more peanut butter cups or gloves. Better put those up here. All right. Um, so now we're going to add some new fluid. This is what I've ran before. This is what I'm going to run again. Maxima fork oil 15 weight. All right. This is good stuff. So stick with what works. I do believe it's going to be a different color. Yep, it's clear. Clearer. So I'm going to go right about there. I'm not really double, but Whatever that is, is what's going to go back in the tube. I don't know. Let's take another look. We know the one on the right is definitely double. But one of them seemed a little bit short. Send it. There's our spring. Now we're going to drop in one of our preload spacers. Wait a minute. These ones are definitely out of this tube. And these came out of the other one. They're a little different by design. But I guess they're close enough in size, right? They're pretty close. Now, I'm just a mini bike scientist. I think if you increase the distance, that that space increases incrementally and gets larger. If these two tubes were next to each other on a fork with different preload, hmm. Now I'm wondering if one of each was supposed to go maybe something like that. Either way, I think we're going to use these ones. Uh, these ones are kind of rugged. Mm. What do you think? We're rocking them. All right, they go that way. Clear it off real quick. And in she goes. Okay. Now we're ready for the next modification the oil being the first one this next part being the second one our second preload spacer is going to be a 5 8 socket this is just a 3 8 drive and it's going to go in just like this this is going to make it 
more difficult to get this cap on. You could always go a little shorter if you couldn't get this down in there. So don't sweat it, but make this your main one if you're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Start with this and then add a couple washers or something on top instead of trying to stack these up. Yeah, no, we're going with the short one. I'm going to try that and then I'll give you a total measurement of one of those sockets and one of those short spacers. The hardest part is getting it started. You want to get like probably a half dozen threads before you even think about letting go and then grabbing your wrench and then tightening it the rest of the way. This isn't torqued, but it is tight. You can see I'm past the seal. I'm pushing down on this. It is a lot stiffer. So sweet. I'm going to leave this one up actually. It's good practice. And I'm going to finish this one and do the same exact thing. Oh yeah, I'll get you that measurement. The shorter spacers are about three quarters of an inch and the longer spacers were about an inch. So we're looking at like two on one side and inch and a half on the other for our base. That's, that's not good. Um, we went with the shorter one. All right, so our maximum stock preload would have been two inches because we would have had two of these. One of these sockets is about two inches by itself and we use the small spacer. So our maximum preload is two and seven eighths of an inch. Quick tip, if you're having trouble trying to do this on a bench, put the fork on the ground. That way you can use your body weight to help you hold the cap down. Then you can just concentrate on the twist. One at a time, back in the clamp, and I give them the torque thunder. The one that holds the brake caliper is going to go on the left, and the other one on the right. Once you bring your tubes up through your clamp and to your top plate, you can then insert and hand tighten your two bolts. Much better. Up next, it's axles, spacers, brakes, and wheels. Whatever it takes to get this thing rolling. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. I want you to stay, yeah.